Hello, I am Anawoltus, and this video is going to be about some politics. Thank you very much. Anyway, I was sitting around with some relatives, having a nice time, and what was on the TV it was Fox News, and there was Sean Hannity, and he was talking to Newt Gingrich. And what was he talking about, you may ask? And the thing he was talking about was the recent problem with uh, people kneeling down during the national anthem of the United States of America just to establish some context. And for those who are entirely unfamiliar with the rest of the context, um, Fox News is a news channel in the United States. Sean Hannity has a program uh, that's uh, one hour long on that news channel. And Newt Gingrich is an important a Republican politician who used to be Speaker of the House and who also in the past has run for president. And I'd, I'd rate uh, Sean Hannity and Newt Gingrich uh, to be uh, Republican loyalists or partisans. Their, their opinions seem to be very party-oriented as opposed to... Um, let's say some some other people who are more oriented on the issues and and by that I mean that they I'd say are more likely to compromise for the good of the party rather than stand on a certain issue so that's that's what I mean they're more loyalists than idealists in that sense but they, there's an element of both there definitely is an overlap there but that is generally just my impression on seeing seeing them and hearing what they say they seem to be of that uh, general uh, persuasion that they're more um, if, if someone were to call them a uh, conservative Republican they would probably uh, be a Republican before a conservative. That's probably what uh, that means. Now, of course, that being said, I'm not saying that they completely reject uh, what uh, in the United States is conservative values. And the reason I say in the United States is because, of course, uh, conserv what conservative means is different depending on each country. And a lot of times, if you're talking about uh, different groups that have the same names in different countries you can get confused thinking that uh, maybe it's like this group in my country but uh, it actually is very different so just for emphasis there so uh, hopefully that has established enough context here but anyway the issue is that there's people who are kneeling down while the national anthem is played which uh, in the United States is considered uncouth and uh, improprietous and I dare say to some extent disrespectful and certainly unpatriotic. That is generally uh, the general opinion, at least among uh, conservatives, of what that is. Now, of course, for the people that were doing it, it, of course, is a sign of protest um, against something that they believe to be wrong in the country. So hopefully I got both sides of the issue down to some extent. And the specific thing that I think uh, a lot of these people are complaining about is the past of the United States involving slavery in addition to uh, what uh, they perceive to be present uh, racist movements. And my personal opinion on this entire thing is that, uh, first of all, my, my legal opinion is that, of course, the NFL, the National Football League, which is an organization that organizes um, American football. If they don't have any rules against doing this, and of course, the law doesn't stipulate any any rules against doing this, I think it is legally okay 
for all these players to kneel down during the national anthem. So I don't see any legal problems with it. So we're not dealing with any any legal justice. What we're dealing with is what I like to call social justice. Um, and by the way, when I say social justice, it probably has slightly different meaning than uh, what many other people call social justice. Um, social justice, what I, what I mean by that is how uh, you deal in society to solve problems that are not legal issues but that are societal issues. For example, um, a social justice issue would be um, fornication, whether that's good or bad, and how you treat people who fornicate. That is what I, I would consider a social justice issue and, and such things. Or another one that I would consider a social justice issue that probably makes a, a much bigger impact is um, racism of business owners. Um, because I personally am opposed of affirmative action. And my opinion on racism of business owners is that if there's a, a business owner that is a racist, then just simply don't do business with him. If if uh, that becomes a problem, you don't have to sue him or anything. I think it's fine to just uh, use your right of free association to not associate with that individual, and then that individual will lose business uh, because people think he's a bigot, and that is social justice that it is something that isn't on a legal level but more on a societal level and of course I think that that never ever should rise up to mess with the legal level because then that wastes everybody's uh, tax money um, if you put all that kind of stuff on legal levels that means you have to make a lot more laws people have to learn a lot more laws uh, the police has to deal with a lot more things and a whole bunch of time and money is wasted for something that could have just as easily been just stay away if it if you have a problem with it. But anyway, back on the issue. Now, I personally disagree with the reason, specifically if it is the the slavery reason for uh, kneeling down. And the reason I disagree with that is because in in my experience i don't think that the average person in the united states or even the average politician in the united states is heavily racist or anything now, of course there are people who are mildly racist there are some people who are heavily racist but uh i'd say for the most part that um isn't very strong now, I, I see a pattern in history where um, you, you see people like Booker T. Washington and uh, Martin Luther King Jr. who really push down the racism, and then you see people like uh, W.E.B. Du Bois who then uh, really agitate people, and that somehow causes a, a racist backlash, essentially, because... I think racism really is a two-way street. That is to say that I disagree with the notion that racism can only be done by a group that has power um, simply because that uh, th then what do we define racial hate from a group that doesn't have power? It, how is that not racism? Because isn't that one form of racism. Now, of course, not all forms of racism involve hate. There are other forms where it's uh, belittling or pet patronizing a certain ethnic group that exists as well. Um, but that that's what I've had to say about that for now. Anyway, back onto Newt Gingrich. Now, what Newt Gingrich was saying is that he didn't want these people to kneel down on uh, national television where people they tune in to see the game and there's people kneeling down 
and that they shouldn't be able to do that there. And I, my opinion on that is that what he's essentially arguing for is a safe space where people aren't allowed to um, to view or not to view but to openly express negative opinions about the country and he wants uh, national football to be a sort of safe space for that that seems to be what he basically argued to Sean Hannity for and and that made me think well isn't that what all the people on the other side of the political spectrum are arguing for as well. They also want their safe spaces so that they can't be disturbed by ideas that they don't like They and they don't have to be exposed, they don't have to be challenged, they just want to be a safe space. And my opinion on safe spaces is the safest space is your own home. You just go home and... If you don't want to be challenged by your ideological opponents, just simply don't enter into an area where you could potentially interact with them. And if you are at an event, like a sports game, there's probably some people out there who are dis in disagreement with something you hold important. And my idea is just let it go and on the people on the football players I would rather have football players be honest and uh, seen as disgraceful than be seen as patriotic and also be liars I don't want I, I want to keep the honest people honest. If they have a problem with the country, I think they should be fine to voice it. Um, now, of course, that being said, if the NFL chooses to decide that, nope, you can't do that, and, and they put it in the players' contracts and all that, then I say, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine if you decide to do that. But until that happens, I think it's absolutely fine for them to exercise their free speech in that manner. Now, of course, I disagree with uh, their foundational argument that leads to their uh, problem, their disagreement, so I personally would not have the same problems. And I think it's, it's alright if there's people out there who just aren't that patriotic. You know, I... I've lived in a number of different countries in my lifetime, um, have, have been a resident, and it's, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes it, people are patriotic wherever you go, and now here comes the, a total side, side road, side, uh, sideline, no, I, that's the opposite of what I've been trying to say, um, a tangent, there we go. I'm going off on a tangent now. North Korea. People always criticize North Korean patriotism. And when when you do that, and then those same people then say, oh yeah, America's great and, and all that, and they're hyper patriotic about the United States, and they criticize North Korean patriotism, and then I think that, uh, and the reason they criticize North Korean patriotism is because North Korea has all these problems. Now, when you look at that, I think that there is a slight element of hypocrisy there. The reason being that, of course, the reason that the North Korean patriotism is criticized is because North Korea is considered a bad country. Now that being said, if you were to say Nor the United States is a better country than North Korea, therefore it is valid to be patriotic of the United States, but not to be patriotic of North Korea, then you wonder, um, the American exceptionalists 
would they criticize being patriotic of another country that they consider l less good than the United States, such as, let's say, Germany. Germany's been doing fine lately. So would, would it be one of those things where you're saying, well, Germans should uh, not be patriotic for Germany, but for the United States, because the United States is a better country. And, and then you get into these weird problems where sometimes the, the reason people are patriotic is because it's their homeland and they want to defend their homeland. And, of course, it is okay to then also have criticisms of your, of your homeland. People say, well, if these people don't like the United States, why don't they move elsewhere? Talking about the people that kneel during the flags. Well, what I think everyone has to consider here is that they're not criticizing. They're not necessarily criticizing everything about the United States. What they are criticizing is a specific issue. And what you have to remember is that they could go to any other country and probably find an issue to criticize. So saying that, oh, you don't like something about the United States, so you should get out, is really, I think, a, a very short-sighted argument because you can find something about any country that you don't like and, and get out of there. So I think the point I'm trying to make here is that... There's nothing, there's no such thing as an absolutely perfect country. And how do I know this? How could I possibly prove this? Well, let's say somebody says the United States of America is an absolutely perfect country. And somebody else says, I disagree. And I'm pretty sure we can find those two people out there somewhere. And that disagreement shows to me that it's not a perfect country because if it were a perfect country then there wouldn't be any reason for anyone in that country to disagree on that issue there you go that's um, I think a, a very logical point there I think well maybe yeah yeah it, it has to be because if it is perfect then the people in it are perfect and if the people in it are perfect then they would be able to make a perfect critique, and if they are able to make a perfect critique, then they wouldn't be able to find some reason to call a, something that is perfect imperfect. And there you go, the perfection. That's the the logical, the logical line of perfection. And if you honestly think that the United States is a perfect country, then maybe you haven't looked far enough. You haven't looked at the people out there who are rioting in the streets. That's a problem. That's imperfect. And also, there are bigots out there. Now, there, I personally don't think that there are as many as some people would like to believe, but uh, they do exist. And I don't think that um, going on that, the idea of a hate crime is a good idea because what I think the idea of a hate crime does is it emphasizes a person's motivation for the crime rather than the actual act of the crime in itself. Um, by that I mean, let's say someone murdered someone and the person murdered the person because uh, they really wanted the money. and that's not considered a hate crime. Now let's say the person murdered the person because the person uh, that was killed was a Chechnyan and the person killing them was a Circassian and the Circassian really hated the Chechnyan for whatever reason, some, some racist reason, and killed the Chechnyan and then that somehow makes it a worse murder because of a different motivation. Um, I, I don't think that the, that the thoughts of people that uh, should, shouldn't, I don't think they should be judged in a 
legal sense. Um, I think that that is a different issue that should, shouldn't really be judged in the courtroom. But uh, what we should judge, however, is the, the physical actions people take. And that's my opinion on that. So I've really been rambling quite a lot about these politi pol political issues. Sorry, for some reason, I've got, um, I've got uh, a lot of burps coming up. Um, I find that rather intriguing. Must have been because of what I recently ate. That's probably it. But if you look at certain elements on the right and certain elements of, on the left, and you can see the same things. You can see echo chambers. You can see people wanting safe spaces. And, of course, safe spaces can become echo chambers quite easily. And you, you can see people asking for um, people of differing viewpoints to get silenced and, and all that stuff. And I think that universally there is a reason why the founders of the United States of America decided to give people the rights of free expression and I think that that right should be protected, especially when you disagree with someone. So, um, I guess uh, conspiracy theory here. Uh, Newt Gingrich wants safe spaces confirmed on live television. Thank you very much. Uh, for watching. Uh, tell me what you thought in the comments below. If you if you would like any clarification, I would be happy to answer any questions in the comments below, um, assuming that they are made in a reasonable amount of time, because I don't see myself going back 20 years to answer um, questions on an old video. Um, that's assuming that YouTube will last another 20 years. Um, yeah, uh, that is a big assumption to make. You know, people get born, and before you know it, they're dead. That's life for you. You you get born, and before you know it, you're dead. And you know what? That's okay. But uh, that really is also a sign of uh, imperfection. But uh, that's how the universe operates at the current moment. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Please leave your comments in the comments section below. Anawiltus over and out.